Hey there! I was contacted by Pelican and Pelican asked me if I wanted to review their new M1005 Souverain Stresemann. And I said, sure thing. So they lent me this Stresemann. Stresemann. Not Streesman, not Streseman, not Stresiman, not Stressiman. Stresemann. And today we're going to have a look at it. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we will adjourn. Let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at the Stresemann M1005 Souverain. Comes in what I call the coffin box, right? Classic that Pelican has been using for a bit. And what else is in here? Well, you can lift up this part. I don't really want to disturb this, but I will anyway. We have a Pelican warranty booklet, and then we have a Pelican moments of joy booklet, sort of like a catalog, right? So we have these two things, which I shall now attempt to return exactly as they were. And with moderate failure, as usual, I continue. Now we have this fake leather, which you can also call faux leather if you want to, but every time I do that someone says, Why do you call it faux leather? Why don't you just call it fake leather? Well, I just did. Fake leather. Okay, there you have it. It is a little pen pouch. You can use it. It has this nice little faux wax seal, which you may or may not enjoy. And then, of course, that is the real pen. Now, let me zoom in a little bit. The M1005 Stresemann. The 5 means that the trims are chrome colored and not um, uh, gold colored. You can see it side by side here with the Lamy just for size, right? The M1005 is a, a larger pen with a nice large nib. And the Stresemann, it's called Stresemann because it commemorates a, uh, a foreign minister, uh, Herr Stresemann who would wear black, grey, striped, uh, striped trousers and a, a single row jacket in either black or, you know, um, anthracite. So these grey stripes commemorate that. Now there has been an M805 Stresemann, there has been an M405 Stresemann, and now we have the flagship of Pelican, the M1005 in Stresemann. So let's, let's have a look at these parts. On top, the finial, we have this nice, the pelican feeding its chick. We have the stylized pelican bill on the clip, right, which I think is a nice detail. Here we have a center band that says Souverain, Germany, Pelican. And of course we have the gray stripes and we have the piston turning knob because this is a piston turning pen. A nice thing that I've always liked about Pelican is that you don't have to turn the cap a whole lot to unscrew it. Section tapers down, flares out a little bit, and then you have another nice chrome colored ring. And the rodinated nib, 18 karat gold, in this case broad, with the Pelican on it. And these nibs do have a very nice bit of scroll work on them. I've always really liked them. Now, talking about these nibs. People very regularly ask me, I want to buy a flex nib, should I buy an M1000 because they have flex nibs. An M1000 does not have a flex nib. An M1000 has a nib that happens to be a little soft and a little bouncy, but be very careful. This is not a flex nib, this will spring, this will lift off the feet relatively easily with pressure, so be very, very careful and whatever you do, do not treat it as a flex nib because it's not, nor is it advertised as such. This is a rumor that has been spread at some point that I disagree with. We have a big feed, plastic, and one of the fun things about these uh, Pelican pens is that you can just unscrew the nib unit. So the nicest way to do is put the, the nib in the crook of your finger there, put your thumb right on top of the feed and carefully unscrew it. Even better is to unscrew the barrel as you uh, pinch the nib and feed. And then you can buy other nib units. This is broad, they also have fine and medium and they have extra fine and they used to have double broad and triple broad, but those are no longer in production. 
but you can still find them and of course then you can uh, put them on. So it's very easy to switch out your nibs, you don't have to heat set anything, it's not friction fit, you have to fiddle with it, you just unscrew the whole unit, which I think is rather nice. Okay, so having said all of this, I think the best thing I can do is show you how the pen writes. So let me zoom out a little bit for you. And that, well, that's a bit too much, huh? And then let's see how this works. So what do we have? The Pelican M1005. Souverain. Stresemann. Uh, the, the nib is 18K broad and the ink quite simply is Waterman Serenity Blue. I wanted to put in a washable blue because I have to return this pen. Okay, And I could of course have put in the Königsblau but I was out so I couldn't put in Pelican's own ink. But as you can see right as I say that the pen skips but it works well with this ink. I have found this nib to be pleasant. I have had issues with uh, Pelican broad nibs recently. They were over polished and they, uh, they don't write so well. Not all of them, but the ones I used were not all equally great. This one seems to be particularly nice. It's smooth and um, of course nobody writes this fast, but just to show you keeps up re very well with ink demand because don't forget this ink was just uncapped and has not been used for probably a week or so and out of the box or, or what do you call that as you uncap it it writes rather well I would say as to its wetness not bad at all now very careful sure you can get out some line variation but I'm being very gentle here. As you can see, the nib does not necessarily like this. So be extremely careful. Do not treat this as a flex nib because it is not. And I have, I own an M1000 and I have lifted the nib off the feed and that is someone had to repair that at some point. So you cannot really treat these as flex nibs. You really shouldn't. Okay, then there is, as always, the reverse writing. And as you can see, it's possible, and it's actually very smooth. And the pen seems to get away with it and doesn't run dry immediately. So you actually can take this from a broad nib to, I would say, a nice fine nib, which is rather pleasant. Okay then, well, let's see what I like about this pen and what I don't like about this pen. Okay, the Stresemann. What do I like? What do I not like so much? Let's first discuss the price. 625 euros. That does include 21% include VAT. You know I have some uh, sponsors. Check out their websites. There is a little banner thing uh, on, my, on my website because there will be people who offer you 10% discount on this. And I think especially for this pen, if you're outside of the EU, you can purchase it without VAT and then with a 10% discount, this can become a pretty interesting pen. So 625 euros and that includes that VAT. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, the price, it's not very low. Let's face it, 625 euros, that's quite a bit of money. Then again, it is the flagship of the Pelican pens, so you are going to pay for the flagshipness of this pen. I do like one thing a lot, and I hope that is a sign of things to come. Pelican has been releasing a lot of special production pens, so not necessarily, not necessarily limited edition, but a limited production, right? So they will only produce it for a limited amount of time. They're not necessarily numbered pens. And almost every time these were M800 pens. And there's nothing wrong with the M800. It's a great size pen. It's comfortable to a lot of people. But I like the M1000. So I really wanted to see a special edition M1000. And I'm very excited that Pelican has now done this. The M1000 size is a great size in my mind. And it's really nice to see that special edition in that particular size. Um, so I like that. 
As a model, I find the M1000 very comfortable. Whether you use it posted or unposted, it doesn't really matter. I find it a very comfortable pen size. So in that regard, very pleasant to use. It's also a beautiful nib. Sorry, and it's a large nib. I have here a number six nib on this yard of lead, another beautiful pen. And the Pelican nib is just very nice. It's very large. Is it the largest nib around? Well, let's reconsider that. This is that nib right next to an Amiki Emperor nib, so it can always be bigger, right? Always someone out there with a bigger one. Now, having said that, I think it's a great pen. I think it's a very pretty, attractive pen. I will say this, I personally do not really care for the Stresemann. That grey finish doesn't really do a whole lot for me. That's a very personal statement and not a reflection on the quality of the pen. What I will say is, and that's why earlier I said it's beautiful, it's super, super classy. A classy design, a classy model, and a very classy finish, and classic finish. This looks like a pen that your grandfather could have used. And that, I think, is very appealing. It's it, that, that, that I don't really like to use the word retro, but that slightly retro feeling, I think, is very nice about this model. So I really like that. As I said, I personally don't necessarily care that much about the Stresemann finish, but if ever there would be a tortoise M1000, I'm game. Right there, right then. So I really, again, hope that this is a sign of things to come, that we will now see special edition M1000s a bit more often than only the M800s or the M400s. Okay, here about, what about an objective thing? Uh, this pen has no ink window, and being a piston filler, that bothers me a bit. Now, I know you can hold it up to light, and yes, if you have a bright light source, you can actually see the ink, but you have to hold it up for a bit for the ink to, to slowly sort of flow down from the barrel a bit. I'm holding it up to a window, it's sunny outside, and I actually have trouble seeing through the barrel. So, I really would have appreciated an ink window. I also think that would have made it maybe even capitalize on that, that vintage look a bit more, because some of the older Pelicans did have ink windows. But of course it would detract from the material, this grey stripe a little bit. Okay, now then, what about the price? Well, 625 euros, that is not cheap. That is about 75 euros more than the regular lineup, say the green stripe M1000, that is not a limited production. And if you think about it that way, 75 euros more for a limited edition, I think, relatively speaking, is not that terrible. There are companies that suddenly charge a few hundred extra just for a limited edition finish. So I don't think that price is, is terrible. Again, you are buying a flagship pen. You're not buying a handmade pen, right? You're not buying a, a handmade pen, so the price, relatively speaking, is high. But we know this is very market conform. You see the same thing in other brands. I'm thinking of Mont Blanc, for example similar type of pricing. So, in itself, I don't think there's anything particularly upsetting about the price, it's just not a super cheap pen. But then again, it is a flagship model. And 18 karat nib and piston filler and a lot of things that people like, and in this case a limited edition finish. Or at least limited production finish. So in all, I think this is quite a nice pen, and I kind of like it. Uh, not for the finish, but the model is one that has always appealed to me. And that's it. So, a very kind thank you to Pelikan for lending me the pen. I really appreciate it. I hope this review was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.